Well, the Opesa County Sheriff's Office is undergoing some new training, and Jessica, you got to be a part of that. I actually did a little bit of embarrassment there. I've never <laughs> shot a gun before, but the department actually received a grant to equip all 150 sheriff and constable units with these new ballistic shields, and they do have to undergo hours worth of training for a good reason. Take a look. Stand by. Threat. Deputies with the El Paso County Sheriff's Office are putting in training time to prepare for emergencies using a new piece of equipment. The latest data from the Gun Violence Archive shows that in the last decade there have been over 43,000 deaths attributed to gun violence in the U.S. and 655 mass shootings. A statewide effort is underway to better equip law enforcement officers for a worst case situation. Shortly after the Uvalde incident, the governor announced that there would be grant opportunities for ballistic shields made available to law enforcement agencies. It's a $2 million investment to help implement Governor Greg Abbott's advanced law enforcement rapid response training launched two years ago to prevent casualties, especially in the case of school shootings. We aim to outfit every patrol vehicle in every campus that we have a school resource officer as well as every constable's patrol car. I spent the day with these deputies and Ricardo Rivera, the chief instructor for the 8th El Paso Sheriff's Training Academy, getting a first-hand look at the intense training that goes into using these ballistic shields. They have to be able to maneuver with it, they have to be able to shoot with it off of uh, small viewports as well as protect themselves. If there's any type of malfunctions, they got to be able to clear that malfunction. Rivera says about four people can get protection behind the new shields and they've been upgraded to protect from duty handgun rounds, regular handgun rounds and the shields are also rifle rated. They could take six AR-15 rounds in the same spot and still protect the officer. So there's a reason why deputies go through hours long training for these shields. They're supposed to weigh about 27 pounds, but after walking with these for a little bit, I can tell you they feel a lot more heavier than that. And you're supposed to do this essentially using one hand. Deputy Ruby Garza told me the shield training can be difficult. Because of the fact that um, being a female with the shorter arms, it's kind of hard to get that gun around the shield. Right. But also says it's a small price to pay to save lives. I'm a school resource officer, um, so if something were to happen at the school, um, that would be a, a big concern, obviously for the children and obviously for myself, because we're the only ones in the school. Deputies say the hope is that there won't be an incident in which they are forced to use the shields but will be ready if they need to. And Jessica, in terms of this being a grant, this funding obviously very important because it won't impact taxpayers. That's something that Commander Urrutia was actually uh, pointing out is that again, this is a grant that is going to different Texas cities and they're chosen based on the demographics and the location of the city, which is why El Paso actually got the funding for that. But we'll, of course, I put more information on Governor Greg Abbott's uh, STAR initiative on our website, kfoxtv.com.